I have the Gigaports Explorer battery box right now charging six radios with the Jenison Solar Charge Controller, the Boost MPPT controller from Jenison, connected to a 150 watt Explorer panel. And the reason I'm telling you all that is because for next week, the 4th of July, 2023, Gigaparts is running a $15 off sale on this Explorer battery box. You can check the link in the description below. This video is sponsored by Gigaparts Explorer line of radios and gear. Let's go. Okay, this is the box, obviously. I've done videos on this box before in the past. This is not new. This has been out for a year or so. A lot of you bought this box at Hamvention, Hamcation of this year. And when it was brand new, we ran a sale price on it then too. But normally this box is about $95 roughly. And it comes with all of the ports that you see here. I'm gonna move this controller out of the way just for a minute. This is the box itself. I have the Gigaparts 24 amp hour battery in it right now. That's that battery there. They make that battery in 12 amp hour, 24 and 50 amp hour. The 50 amp won't fit in here but the 24 fits great. You could probably almost fit two 24s in there and parallel them together, I don't know. But that one fits great. But you could put a Bioeno in there. You could put another brand of battery in there. Doesn't matter. I'm running their PL4 power battery just because I found it to be fitting. And at the time of this recording, I've had this Explorer battery box since two weeks before it was released to the public. And I have used it on numerous occasions, numerous POTA activations, numerous ham fests. I take it with me almost everywhere I go. Every road trip I've been on since I've owned it, I take it with me. Sometimes I use a separate battery or box to power my radio by itself, but this is the box that I use to charge all of the other things. And I'm gonna go through these six radios right now. One of the cool things, one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is not just to show you the, this box again and the updates I've done to it, the small, small modifications I've done to it. Mostly the Smoke and Ape and the KM4A ACK stickers, which add, you know, probably a good five to six amp hours to whatever battery you put into it. But I wanted to show you all of the HTs that I carry around in the HT box I have over here. I carry this box of HTs with me pretty much everywhere I go also, and they're all chargeable via 12 volts. So we're gonna go through that right now. Now you can see this, this is the Kenwood D74. I'm looking forward to getting the D75 when it comes out because it is USB-C chargeable. This one has to have a proprietary plug. But if you look at this radio, I put power poles on the end of this cable. I just did this here a few minutes ago. If you look at this radio right there, it clearly says DC 13.8 volts. So it is 13.8 volts input, and I did, a, I did a test. I cut this off. This is the Kenwood charger. I put power poles on it. I plug this into the wall inside, and it is producing exactly 13.8 volts coming out through this transformer. So perfect. Okay, now we've only got 13.1 or 2 volts coming in right now, but it's close enough. The voltage doesn't have to be exact. It is charging. You can see it charging right there, and it's doing great. This, this HT was dead when I plugged it in. <laughs> I have the R Finder B1 Classic. This is not the B1 Plus. Bob is a stingy and greedy person. He hasn't given me a B1 Plus yet. But the B1 Classic has the R Finder charging base with USB-A on it. This USB-A port goes in the back of this R Finder charging base. You can get this base with regular 110 volt or with USB. And that's where that is. It's going into Quick Charge 3.0 right there. And you can see the green light's on. That means it's charging. Green light means it's charged. Red light means it's not charged. It's even finished charging by now. Okay, I've had that on there for a little bit. The 5 volt USB is not going to charge as quickly as 110 volt, but it does charge. So you can take that in the field and charge it. This is my Anytone. This is the D7, D878 UV2, not the Plus model. It is the blue button model. I think they've changed all the buttons on those by now, but used to be the blue was the second oldest model, and my latest and greatest model has a green button. I'm told that's been changed, but I don't know. Somebody comment below and let me know. But this is an Anytone base. I got this from Amazon. However, I think it was from the Bridgecom store on Amazon, so I will share links to everything we talk about in the description below today. This also plugs into, you can see right there, this goes to that. So yes, you could you could cut this off. You could put power poles on eventually. That's probably what I will do. But I just, I already had this ready to go. We got the red light right there. We got the red light on the charging base there. And this guy, which is an Amazon special, goes from cigarette lighter adapter receptacle to power pole. 
Perfect. So that's working for us great right now as well. That's charging my Anytone uh, dual band DMR radio. So now we've got three radios being charged. That's three of the six. The fourth one is the Osheng UV9 D Mate, available at buy2wayradios.com. Link in the description below. I've got a battery on it from bettersaferadio.com. Now that battery's turned green now. It was red when I plugged it in. This is a USB C rechargeable battery for all of the UV9X series radios on Osheng. So I bought this radio at, it was either Buy Two Way Radios or RNL. Mo, oh, it's been a while. I've had this radio for two or three, four years, something like that. But I, got, I did not get this radio from Better Safe Radio because they don't sell it. But Better Safe Radio and Osheng worked together to come up with this USB-C rechargeable battery. And I put that on my UV90 Mate, and guess what? We've got that ready to go. It's on my All-Star right now. KC5 HWB on All-Star. Hey, Brad, I'm just doing a demo for a video. Wanted to uh, key up the all-star system. Appreciate you being out there, buddy. No problem at all. No problem at all. Uh, glad to help out. Of course, you can show off a little bit on the other stuff, too. <laughs> he's, got, he's got two radios running. You can hear him twice in the background. Yeah, yeah, I don't have that connected right now, but uh, yeah, good deal. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. KC5, HWB. He's got a Brandmeister talk group plugged into that. Kind of sounds like crud, as digital to analog does. I don't particularly like using that, but some people use it. There you go. That's Brandmeister connected in now. So it works. I like All Star better. I think it sounds better than cross connecting modes like that. But hey, if you're on, if you're on uh, Brandmeister, connect to that talk group and go. But yeah, USB-C rechargeable battery for the Oshang radio. That is number four. I'm gonna plug that back in, even though it's charged, because. I want to show that the box is handling everything by itself. Next up is my Yezu FT5D, this nifty cable here that I got from Amazon. Actually, I got that cable from HRO, but Amazon has them. I just went into HRO one day and I was like, hey, do you have a USB charging option for either Yezu or Kenwood? Because the ICOM that we're gonna talk about in a minute has its own USB. And so I bought this from HRO. I don't know if they still carry them or not. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. This one here has this adapter that you need. I lost this, I lost the adapter for this one. This little adapter right here goes on the end of it. The one at Amazon doesn't have an adapter. It just comes straight to this plug. But the one at HRO I bought has this adapter. So you plug that in there. It has this upstep converter that goes from five volt USB-A to 12 volt DC, 0.4 to one amps. Now it's ironic that I'm going from a 12, 13 volt battery through a USB port, which drops it down to five volts into this thing that up converts it to 12 volts again. I am 99% sure you can plug these guys directly into 12 volts. I said that in a video a while back and someone came along and said, well, the AC charger on this actually says 10.5 volts. And it does, that's true. But I believe, I'm gonna research that. Somebody put a comment below because I'm pretty sure you can just take this and plug it straight into Anderson Power Poles and be done with it. I don't wanna tell people wrong, so I need to uh, research that. But this works very well. Again, not gonna be as fast because it is stepping up five volts to 12 volts, but it will charge your radio in the field. And of course the ICOM, the ID52, which is their latest and greatest flagship model right now, has micro USB charging. This is the only thing that's micro out of all this stuff, micro USB charging, and that charges that very well as well. Not pictured here because, <laughs> because I lost the end to this. Now, what you can do is you can take this and you can plug it into the back of a normal Anytone charging base, and you can use this as your Anytone charging cable because it also goes from five to 12 volts. And right now the Anytone's plugged in to, directly to 12 volts with that cigarette lighter adapter. So you can do that with this regular plug that's on this cable I got from HRO, or with this adapter, the second one of which I lost, don't know where that went, would go into my Yezu VX6R. This is my favorite, current favorite, tri-band HT that I carry with me. It does two meters, 220 and 440. And it takes the exact same plug that the FT5 does. So I can plug this into the FT5, I can plug it into the VX6. I just don't have the adapter for, for this cable or I'd have seven radios plugged in right now. So that box is charging everything. I don't have the Jensen hooked up at the moment. We're setting it right at 13.0 volts. I know it's flashing in the camera. That's just the frame rate of the camera, sorry. But it is charging that up with no problems at all. It's not gonna charge as quickly with all of this stuff in here because of current draw from all of these at the same time, but it is working. And you could totally use this in the field. You could use it on Poda. You could use it on, I guess you could use it on soda if you wanted to carry all this stuff up there. And, but you could you could use it on field day or any other kind of uh, mobile activation anytime you're on the road. Let's plug up the Jenison controller. All right, as I mentioned in my previous video, this is a power input port right here. 
with single power poles on them. The two other ports have dual power poles. Dual power poles there, dual power poles here, okay? And this one's power input. But it doesn't really do anything different than these two do. They all go to the same two ports right here, which are the binding posts on the outside. And then they go straight from the binding post to the battery. And this is some 10 gauge wire that goes to the battery from the, from the battery to the binding post. And this other stuff I think is 12 gauge wire. This charging is also 10 gauge wire, but this stuff here is like 12 gauge wire. I don't like the fact that this, where you would plug in the, the solar panel, because I cut this, this doesn't come like this. I cut this wire and I cut that wire to plug the Jenison in here. But I don't like the fact that this goes presumably from your solar panel into the Jenison right here to these binding posts. So I purchased on Amazon, and I'll link that below as well, a Anderson power pole splitter to where I'm gonna plug my battery into the splitter. It's gonna split this single Anderson out to two ports. One will go to directly to the Jenison, to this plug, and the second port from the battery will go to everything else. So that way we can have the Jenison charge controller with fewer connections and fewer ports between the battery and the actual charge controller. So for now, I have the Jenison on the outside. So now I have panel in the sun coming into the Jenison. 12 volt LiPo 4 4S 8 amp panel. 8 amps is roughly 150 watts. This is probably about the biggest panel you'd want to put on it. This panel will pull in seven, seven and a half amps in full direct sunlight like what I've got it right now. This is probably about the biggest panel you'd want to put on this controller, which is which is perfect, works great. And then I've got the Jenison coming out and going in here right now, which again is plugged in and going through all these binding posts. So it's probably losing amperage and all those connections I would guess, but it is working and I'm gonna reconfigure it later. And right now you can see we've got 13.5 volts. I know it's still flashing, sorry about that. It was showing 13.0 volts a minute ago. When I first plugged it up, it was showing about 12.8 volts before I plugged in the solar panel. Now I charged the battery all night last night. The battery's topped off full 100%, showing about 13.5 or six volts before I plugged everything in. And then I plug in six radios to it and it drops down to, it hovered around 12.8, 12.9 for about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so before I plugged the solar panel. And I, I got the idea, I was like, hey, let's incorporate the Jenison and the solar panel into this. Jenison is sold by Gigaparts. You can find those in the link in the description below. Save 5% off of everything we talked about today, including the discounted battery box with the coupon code of KC5HWB. So everything we talked about today at the Gigaparts website will be 5% off additional to the price you see with the code of KC5HWB. All the Amazon links are affiliate links, so take that into account. The uh, Better Safe Radio are affiliate links, take that into account. I appreciate all these sponsors. This is a multi-sponsor video. Bridgecom for the AnyTone stuff. R Finder for the R Finder stuff. Uh, the Yezu stuff I got from RNL. The ID52 from ICOM I got from RNL. All of the power pole, battery box, solar charge controller, and solar panels all came from Gigaparts. So appreciate uh, appreciate everyone being out there and multi multifaceted video today. So that's it. Take advantage of the 4th of July sale for the Gigaparts box, guys. Again, I've been using this box since it came out. I don't remember if it was, it was before the Huntsville Ham Fest last year, because they sold a heck of a lot of them at the Huntsville Ham Fest last year. So I think it was around maybe about this time last year when it first dropped, and they were running a special saying they were normally $99, they had them on discount for $79, and they sold a ton of them. Then they raised the price and discounted the price again for the Ham Fest, discounted the price again at Dayton and at uh, Hamcation this year. So they're discounting the price again now, for you guys, for my audience, plus you can save an additional 5% off with the code of KC5HWB. Don't forget that additional 5%. Huge shout out and thank you to Gigaparts for doing this. I called them the other day and I was like, hey, I got an idea for a promotion, but, uh, and they're like, oh yeah, we're all about that. What, what, what? They were really excited about it. So I'm like, let's get my viewers a couple of discounts for the 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. Happy 4th of July. Thank you everyone for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so that I don't have to.